when I travel to interesting places around the world, um, my wife likes to come with me. But uh, despite my best efforts, when we got to the airport, uh, it turned out that we were booked in different rows. And this was a disaster. <laughs> um, you know, I, and so, uh, you know, she wasn't going to sit for eight hours on a plane next to some stranger. So, you know, I think we developed a plan where I was going to run up and down the aisle and try and broker a multi-seat trade deal to, you know, get this to all work. And so we finally get to the airplane, and, uh, and I, I noticed, I said, oh, look, dear, the reason that we're in separate rows is, is that uh, you got upgraded to first class. And so she said, oh, okay, see you in Berlin. <laughs> so, anyway, so I, it had a happy ending. Rocky start, happy ending. Okay, um, let's start with this one. Uh, the idea uh, of MFI is to have a modular physical, physical layer. In other words, get one physical layer that we can reuse for multiple protocols and multiple uses. You can see in the diagram over on the left-hand side here, everywhere that's in red, I'm sure that's an arbitrary color choice, but, um, is where you could use uh, MFI. That would be uh, potentially for display, camera, for uh, low latency interface, uh, for application to application um, uh, taught stuff with uh, Uniport M. Uh, we also do interactions with several other standards organizations. Uh, for uh, USB, we have SSIC, which uh, is how you would talk to uh, wireless LAN, uh, any of the 802.11 specs. Um, and then also uh, with UFS, um, well, through JEDEC, we have a, a method to talk to main storage. Um, the idea is to have a reusable physical interface to, that we can put anywhere. If you're someone who makes SOCs, um, um, one of the largest challenges is taking a physical layer from one geometry to the next. And so if you have something that you can reuse, in other words, design once, then um, you have the best possible use of your resources in time. Just to you do your M5 once, and then you can reuse it anywhere on the chip you need to do it. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the terminology that we use uh, for an M5. The whole thing is called a link. Uh, it's made up of uh, two sublinks. Uh, a sublink is a, a set of lanes that go in one fixed direction. As you can see, one of the features of M5 is, is that you can uh, have multiple, you, you can have um, asymmetric uh, links you, or lanes. You can, have a, um, you can have multiple lanes going in one direction and there are different number of lanes than going in the other direction. Um, Actually, when it comes down to what we specify in, in the M5 spec itself, it's only these little black boxes, the MRX and the MTX. The rest of it is pretty well left to, uh, it's, it's, think of it as a building block or a Lego. You can plug them together any way that makes sense uh, for your application and for your platform. Um, the high speed signaling is done with uh, not NRZ or non return to zero. This is your fairly standard uh, high speed serial interface. Um, I didn't go into much detail about that, but I did find that the, I did think the low speed was kind of interesting. Uh, we use a pulse width modulation, uh, which is self clocking. In other words, um, we take the unit interval and divide it into roughly into thirds. And the majority state of that interval. Um, becomes the uh, becomes a bit description and Durbel is online oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see since the majority and this one is the one that comes out as a bit one and this is a zero bit and you can see along the bottom here kind of an illustration of how a, a, a bit stream would look and the advantage of this course is that it's self clocking you have your clock your data all in one line Graham, it's nice to see, you know, it's nice to see relatives in the audience. <laughs> Always nice to have family here. Okay, um, so uh, I thought I would spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, state diagram. Um, you can see 
that uh, most of the, whether it's the PWM burst or the high speed burst, um, it's really made of a, a couple pieces. Uh, there's an there's a active and a, a sort of a rest mode. Uh, in the case of burst, it's called stall. In the case of uh, PWM burst, it's called sleep. And so the idea is uh, kind of a rush to halt. In other words, there's a, a sort of a, a flurry of activity while you're um, trying to transmit data from one place to the other. Then you immediately go to a low power mode when you're done with the burst. Uh, the idea is, is that we make the transition so fast that um, it's significant in terms of saving power, but not readily apparent to the application that you're adding latency to, the, uh, to, to this. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a configuration state. Uh, you can do through line config or basically through these dotted purple lines, which are reconfiguration triggers. Anytime you go to install or sleep, you can update the operating state of the link. When you go to a standby state, uh, whether you're in uh, POM or high, high speed, you would go to hibernate. And um, let me see, I think that's about all I wanted to say about this slide. Uh, you can see that the receiver state machine looks almost exactly like the transmit. Um, all state transitions, everything is initiated by the transmit side gated by the transmit side, all the conditions for transition to the next state are transmitted over during a burst, set up, and then as you transition out of that burst into stall, all of those actions get carried into the next state. And I'm probably going too fast. So let's talk about what a, what a burst looks like, whether it's a, a PWM burst or a high speed burst. You start from your stall or sleep, and then go into a prepare. Um, this prepare is necessary in order to, um, in, in sleep, in order to save power, you've done something, you've done some things like turn off termination, and uh, uh, so you need some time to get those circuits to warm up and stabilize. In addition to that, in high speed, you may need a, a sync period. This is to uh, synchronize the link because the um, clock is transmitted with the data. Um, after that, you'll get a marker zero, and then um, any kind of uh, data, either a filler or data or uh, other markers. A filler happens when um, when your link is, say for instance, there's a, um, a, a asynchronous interface between the physical layer and the application layer above it. Um, if the data is not ready uh, at that at that boundary. Uh, we'll put in a filler so that there's something to send over the line that's uh, you know going to be 8-bit, 10-bit encoded, correctly encoded. Um, and that's what the filler's for. We can put data. And then uh, when we uh, do a run length violation uh, called tail of burst is when we are finished with the burst, our signal that we're finished with the burst and we'll return to either stall or sleep. Now another thing I wanted to talk about is the, uh, the way that um, M5 <coughs> saves power. And this is not just through having uh, uh, a low power active interface. The other way that this saves power is that um, it goes very quickly in and out of the different power states. Um, here we have for version 1.0 uh, we did a survey of uh, a number of, and a number of uh, contributor companies responded, and this is the amount of power in each one of the states. This is sort of the average, um, and also the amount of time it takes to uh, the latency to recover out of that state. Uh, that's ones of nanoseconds for stall, uh, ones of microseconds for sleep. Hibernate is configurable from 0.1 all the way down to 1 millisecond, depending on the particular implementation. So you can see, um, based on the state, uh, we have extremely low power. These, uh, these numbers are, are with uh, one transmitter, one receiver, and then all the circuitry necessary for clock multiplication, that would be PLL and the distribution. Um, and so the idea being that uh, you know this this is a uh, 
This is a physical layer well matched to the mobile terminal, which is uh, you know, a phone or a tablet, something that um, operates off a battery that uh, doesn't have a great deal of power to spare and would like to uh, you know, hibernate and go into very low power mode as quickly as possible and resume uh, the minute that there's something going on, a phone call, somebody touches the screen.